It's uh, a little sad that some of the pictures were released a little bit early from a few people poking around the internet. But um, yeah, they're showing us uh, a car with some of the key changes. Again, the caveat with any launch is that what they show you isn't necessarily what's going to hit the first race. But then again, what you see at the first race is never at the second race either. So, you know, we're forever playing catch up with development. So, but, you know, Ferrari... In fairness to them, have always shown us lots of pictures of the new car, lots of angles, very consistent year to year. And they've shown us an engine, which for you know, Ferrari in the modern hybrid era is an absolute first. There's never been any official pictures of a Ferrari engine since 2014. Um, previous to that, there would always be at least a, a CAD drawing or a photo of the old V8s, uh, V10s, V12s, what have you. Uh, so, yeah, Ferrari have been a little open. There, you know, there are details on the car that aren't... Uh, on show yet but that is exactly the same as all the other teams hiding lots of the floor edge detail and uh, stuff around the back of the car but again that's not unusual for a car launch from any team. Ferrari's task really has been to get the engine producing power with the uh, fuel flow rate which is now monitored in a way that can't be circumvented which again the accusation is that Ferrari were playing around with that in 2019. They couldn't do that in 2020 and didn't have the time to recover so they've had all of 2020 to recover whatever they were doing with that engine and again you know we uh, will give them the benefit of the doubt lots of cynics and conspiracy theorists will say something slightly different but yeah Ferrari have done a huge amount of work most of the gossip has come from the Italian press so you have to take that with a pinch of salt but yeah certainly Ferrari and their customers which again is a good um, way of getting a feel for where the Ferrari engine is if Sauber Alfa Romeo and Haas are saying the new engine this year is going to be a big improvement for us then you have to believe that the S engine genuinely is a step forwards what they've done to it well I mean who knows frankly um, you can see that they've played around with some of the layout on the top of the engine because of the way the roll hoop and the inlets are working we can't see until the body works off but the suggestion is, is that they've been working on the inlet plenums which is an area that Mercedes equally have been playing with possibly also with the way that the intercooler works with the engine as well that's another area where you could potentially gain some power the engine we've seen I think that's around 2016 2017 I've only seen it very recently this is again as usual our snap analysis just minutes after seeing the car launched uh, so there's lots of other stuff out there that we would love to be able to look at just don't simply have the time but but the big intercooler you can see hanging off the front of the engine was a feature from a few years ago. They've repositioned it over the years, um, but like Mercedes, they tend to use a water-cooled intercooler rather than a purely air-cooled one, which allows them to package the engine and the, the coolers a little bit better. So I think that's the area we'll need to look at when we get to testing, when we get to Bahrain and first see you know, the car exposed to the cameras. The side pods and the general bodywork are over the top of the engine is a little bit more shrunk and maybe not as extreme as we've seen with some of their rivals but certainly it's a big step forwards from what they had in 2020. The other interesting thing is they've moved some more cooling uh, up into the roll hoop areas. A couple of little extra inlets bonded on around the outside of the roll hoop feeding down over the engine. Now what's interesting is that whereas perhaps we would look at the McLaren which had a very bulky engine cover where they've increased the cooling with Ferrari they've still got a very sunken engine cover there's a lot of shark fin exposed so they don't have massive radiators or intercoolers over the top of the engine somehow they've repackaged that whole area and still managed to keep a very low line um, top bodywork which the theory is is that gives you more airflow to the rear wing I think the the Renault or the Alpine designers would say that that isn't necessarily a big problem for them uh, so yeah it's interesting there are some changes in that area but again yeah, we really do need to see that bodywork off to be a hundred percent sure but certainly Ferrari have worked very hard over the winter on this car. It's similar to what we've had in the past so you have the high inlet which obviously Ferrari introduced. They're what I would call a jelly mold or a uh, downwash um, side pod design where the side pod very quickly slopes straight down to the floor. There's no undercut around the bottom of the side pods which helps airflow go over the floor to the diffuser which obviously gives you more downforce. Um, it slightly worse in some other uh, uh, aspects of, of aero, but basically getting the diffuse to work is the most important thing. Most other teams are doing this. A few people are the exception. Um, probably, um, uh, probably Renault, uh, Alpine are probably the people that have gone that, that the most different in that concept. So this isn't anything new that Ferrari are doing. They're just you know refining concepts that they've used and lots of other teams have used. Front wing, you always have to take it with a pinch of salt because it's a, such an easy uh, uh, element to change. Um, Ferrari tend to have 
uh, um, an outwash design and an inboard loaded. So most of the wings creating its downforce more towards the middle of the spans of the wing, much less towards the end plate that helps them get the airflow out around the front tires. Uh, the most interesting thing on the front end really is the nose. Now Ferrari, as we understand, have spent their development tokens. So every team have most of the cars designed frozen from early last year, but they're given two tokens in which to develop a part of the car. Now, other teams have worked on you know, the front suspension, rear suspension, the nose. Ferrari have spent theirs with a the gearbox carrier, which means they've not been able to put a completely new nose and follow the slim nose design that most other teams are doing following Mercedes in order to get the most out of the cape. So what Ferrari have done, they've been quite clever uh, and they've actually followed some of the ideas that we've seen with the Sauber uh, or the Alfa Romeo. You have to remember Ferrari have taken designers from Alfa Romeo back into the fold over the winter. As you can see that there's some, you know, cross flow of information there as ideas are being passed around. And what they've done with the nose is they've kept the wide but shallow nose, which we've seen on the car really since these regulations have sort of settled in in sort of 2015, 2016. But what they've done is they've worked to make more of the cape. Now, the cape is this vein that goes underneath the nose. And it, it's a very much misunderstood piece of aero kit. It's not trying to create downforce. It's not trying to create you know, low pressure under the nose. It's purely there as a big, powerful vortex generator, which works with the, the Y250, sending airflow back through the barge boards and separating out around the back of the car. And what they've done is they've brought the cape right to the front of the nose and brought the nose mounting pylons in ever so slightly. And this puts more airflow under the cape, which increases the size of the vortex it produces. And Ferrari are a little bit hampered in this area by the design of their nose. They'd much rather have a narrow nose. But what they've done is they've kind of repackaged to try and get the front of the cape as high as possible, but also run the cape right underneath the front of the raised nose and the front of the chassis. And it joins the turning veins, what are known as the J veins that hang under the front suspension. And the cape actually merges with them, which is quite a clever way of doing things. Um, it, I guess you could say it could be prone to some sensitivity because it's such a long aero device and you get a lot of ride height change in that area. But... You know, let's say that Ferrari have got that right. It's quite an interesting way of doing things. Uh, oddly, Mercedes seem to have shortened their cape this year. So, you know, there's there's obviously lots to this component's design, which uh, we've yet to see. Um, there's also some more uh, Hinville uh, development seen on the top of the nose as well. Uh, just where the nose mounts to the chassis, there's a whole array of little fins that look very funky. Uh, something that lots of teams have run in various ways, but... Um, Alfa Romeo, Sauber have run them with quite an extravagant set and these are doing two jobs they're parting the airflow over the top of the chassis which helps the S duct work which cleans up the airflow under the nose under the cape obviously is very useful and they also create a little bit of downwash which helps the airflow that's basically coming up off the front wing to turn back downwards over the barge board so you can get it around the side pods and over the diffuser for more downforce. So again, you can see some, some ideas passing between the uh, factory team and also the customer team. And it certainly looks as though uh, Sauber have you know, really uh, taken um, some of the ideas with Simone Resta going back to Ferrari over the winter. Um, apart from that, you know, much of the other design really is, you know, we've seen it in the top body uh, uh, with the side pods. Barge boards will change, and I've look, looked at those too much in detail because obviously they will change massively. All the floor edge, which is the big regulation change this year, is all kept very bare. And it's quite interesting. Um, everyone's kept their uh, secrets uh, on this area away from people. But when Mercedes said, well, we're hiding our stuff, we're not going to show it to you, everyone assumes that it's only Mercedes that have got something clever. Everyone's going to be putting details around the edge of the floor, around the brake ducts and the diffuser to regain that lost downforce that was made with the regulation changes over the winter. Uh, and then at the back of the car, pretty much everything as we've seen before. We know Ferrari have changed the structure at the back of the car, which people may describe as the gearbox. Uh, in modern technical terms, it's called the gearbox carrier now, which is the carbon fibre part that links the engine to the rear suspension and to the rear crash structure. And inside you have the gearbox cartridge, which is a completely separate unit that can be pulled out of this carrier to have its work done on it. So Ferrari potentially have changed some rear suspension geometry. Nothing as radical as we've seen on the Red Bull uh, on the cars that we can see so far. Uh, they seem to have kept the inboard suspension, which is the dampers and the springs inside the gearbox carrier. Again, that would have required a token, but their token was spent on the external part. There were some rumours that there was trouble, trouble with the stiffness of this part last year. 
I'm not so sure those rumours are really true, but still that's where we understand Ferrari have spent their token um, to clean up the aero, um, probably to change some of the packaging around the back of the car again. But really, when you look at the chassis, it's just a logical development that we've seen, you know, sort of throughout um, the, the grid this year. Everyone's really worked on the aero because they can't change much else. So really for Ferrari, I think that trump card is, is what they've got under the engine cover. What have they done with that power unit over the winter? And that really will decide where their competitiveness will be this year. Didn't expect the green, eh? We got we to know it one week ago, more or less. Yeah, 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 true. It was last minute change. But yeah. I have to say that I'm getting used to it, seeing it on the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it looks good.